Hey guys, what's up? Zombie here. Welcome back to episode, wow, 44 of Evil Zombies Lair. Um, we're going to go over several things today. First, we're going to talk about some personal stuff, what I've been up to in life, why the heck it's taken me so long to get another episode out. I have a reason. It's not a good reason, but I have a reason. Uh, we're going to talk about some multimedia stuff, you know, movies, TV kind of news, what's been happening in that world. Uh, the anime recommendation of the week. We will go over some tech news, you know, nifty gadget news I thought was interesting, or at least just piqued my interest. And then we're going to talk about the main topic of the day, which is going to be about pen and paper games. So, or pencil and paper games. You're going to enjoy that. If not, it'll at least be informative. So, yeah, let's jump into it, guys. So, first off, personal updates. What have I been up to? I have been sick a lot. My kids have been sick a lot. One of them would get sick... Then the other one will get better, and then that one will get sick again, and then they pass it back and forth. They got me sick. For my daughter and me, it turned into an infection. It was just all down in our, like, deep in our lungs, and, like, it was all bad. I mean, it was just terrible. <laughs> we were on antibiotics and stuff like that. Neither of us could sleep. It was bad. That's been weeks. Like, we were eat we were sick for, like, three weeks each. She was sick. My four-year-old, she was sick for three weeks straight. Then I was sick for, like, three weeks straight after that. Uh, my nine-year-old, she got sick for a very little bit because she is healthy as a horse and very strong. That child has better lungs than I will ever have. I mean, she can run longer than I can. She's nine. Kid's awesome. So, luckily, she only got sick for about one week. My wife got sick for about one week. Then she got me sick again after I'd already recovered. So I'm recovering again from another sickness. So for a like, good month and a half to almost two months, we've all just been passing around an illness. And it's been exhausting, just to just be honest with you on that. So that has been a big part of what I've been doing and why I'm so behind times. Because luckily, I recorded a bunch of game episodes for when I got sick. Like, before I got sick, I just got into a good habit, and I recorded a crap ton of episodes. So I was able to just post a bunch of those while I was recovering. So that's what all the videos for, like, the past couple months were. <laughs> Pretty much backlog videos, but I've gone through that now. I'm out of backlog videos. I need to record some new content, and I am doing that. So, yeah. That's up to date on why it's taking me so long. But there is some fun, something fun that I've been doing that actually has to do with our main topic. For the first time ever, like one of my friends had a, a baby shower at our house. So all of us guys um, went over to his place while his wife was doing the baby shower over here. And we all hung out. And for the first time ever, I played Dungeons and Dragons. I had never played that before. Um, I remember vaguely some of my friends in high school wanted to play that. I didn't really know what they were talking about with it, so I just kind of shrugged it off and said, no, I'm okay. Um, I never really looked into it, and for a couple weeks ago, that was the first time I ever tried out Dungeons & Dragons, and it was a lot of fun. It's not something I would ever get myself into for myself. I would probably only do it if I have friends with me. Or, like, if someone comes over and they already have everything, because that's an expensive hobby. I looked at the price of everything. Holy crap. But it was fun. It was enjoyable, and I really dug it. But I'm trying to, I'm just having a little bit of fun with my kids on that also. So I'll explain that in the main topic because I'll get into that. And it's something that might be enjoyable for other parents. So moving on, that was the personal updates that I've been up to. Now we're going on to the multimedia stuff. So what's been happening in the media world? Well, something that you've probably heard of, it's a bit dark, the Momo Challenge. Not going to go into depth, into much detail on this. Basically, don't let your kids do YouTube unsupervised. No matter what they're wa you're letting your kids watch, there's a chance they might see an ad that you, that you don't approve of or one of the videos in the queue um, after their video finishes might pop up might be something that you're not okay with them watching. You should be setting up pre-approved playlists for them that you've already watched the videos of or only on trusted channels, things like that, or you should watch with them. The whole challenge, that whole challenge was a very dark thing. I'm sure you've heard of what it is and what was behind it. Not going to go into it. It was a very dark thing. It's a bad thing for people to put on there for kids to see. But the big problem here is parents aren't watching what their kids are watching. They're just letting their kids sit there and watch YouTube. After this came out, I just told my kid, you're not watching YouTube anymore. Netflix, there you go. 
We have Netflix. We have TV. It's good. And I watch with them. I mean, we'll sit and watch a show together, but a couple days a week, don't let them watch anything at all. Bust out a board game. Let the kids run around outside. It's fun. Out in the backyard. Just let them have a good time. Don't just let them watch YouTube. YouTube is a dark place, and it can get very dark very quick. Like, at least if you're letting them do something like Netflix and just tell them what show they can watch for that night for how long, a couple episodes, and then you're good. I don't see what the problem is with this, people. It's basic parenting. Watch a show with your kids, then go have some fun with them. Simple. Monitor what your kids are doing. (laughs) I mean, I'm probably a little too strict with my kids, but hey, they understand what the difference between reality and fake is. And they know what days they're not allowed to watch TV, what days they can. They they know their rules. They follow them. It's all it really takes. Okay, moving on. I'm not going to get into the whole preachy thing. So moving on, guys. Um, something I thought was really cool. This is some fun news in the whole multimedia thing. Disney is supposedly buying out Fox. And what that means is they're also going to have the the X-Men license. And what that means, since Disney already owns Marvel and LucasArts, I guess, they own everybody. They're going to have a monopoly, just like Walmart, (laughs) pretty much. But Disney is buying out Fox, so the X-Men and Wolverine can become canon parts of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU. So this is fantastic. I love it because everything Disney really can't do much wrong. I mean, they're a marketing powerhouse, and they know how to make good formula-based movies that will be successful and will be enjoyable. People always complain, oh, the movies are too formulaic. There's a formula because it works, guys. It works, it makes them a lot of money, and people enjoy watching these feel-good movies. I mean, we enjoy it. It's fun. We can just blast through a series of it, and it's okay if our kids watch most of the movies with us because most of the time they have a happy ending and very few people die. And the movies where people do die, we can at least filter through those pretty easily. So, yeah, (laughs) Disney's buying out Fox. It might make a little more of a kid-friendly version of Wolverine. After we saw Logan, I'm not sure he could ever go back to a friendly version of Wolverine. I loved seeing him kill everybody terribly. It was awesome. But, to the point, that's cool. They could do a crossover, and there's a lot of cool things that can happen from this. So I am very excited. So, moving on, anime recommendation of the week. I'm actually doing pretty good on time today, I think. I hope. Anime recommendation of the week. Megalo box. I like boxing. I like mechanical parts and uh, futuristic shows. Gritty futuristic shows are amazing. Outlaw Star and Cowboy Bebop are some of my favorite shows. You know, gritty f- futuralistic kind of stuff. Uh, well, I guess Outlaw Star is not really that realistic, but it's like a gritty future. But still, Megalo box is basically boxing with robot arms. And it's awesome. And it's also kind of a whole big tribute and retelling in its own way of Aishita no Jo, which is, it's like the first uh, very successful big boxing comic or manga and anime. It was this huge epic show and and manga, and I think you really need to see that too. It has a good conclusive ending. It was fantastic. It had a good runtime. It was actually a pretty long show. Um, but this is kind of like a tribute to Aishita no Jo has a lot of plot telling similarities and it was well done. I mean, I enjoyed this series very thoroughly. Go check it out, Megalo Box. If you want to see what other shows I have seen, go check out myanimelist.net slash profile slash evil zombie one two three. Okay, moving on to tech news. So this is more of an observation, but you guys have probably already heard the announcements of the Oculus and of the new Oculus and the new Vibe that will be coming out. Well, it's two new Oculuses that are coming out. But what they're doing now is they're having inside-out tracking. What that means... Okay, what that means is that they're going to be copying what Windows Mixed Reality has already been doing for the past year. Or year and something. They're basically copying what Microsoft already implemented into their system. They're probably going to be improving on it. I don't doubt that at all. Um, because the technology has been around and can be polished. But... They're doing cameras inside the headset that are tracking everything in the room and the handsets where those are, or the controllers. So there's going to be LED lights on the controllers so it can easily track where they are. There's not going to be any sensors positioned around the room. It's all going to be done from the headset. 
just like Windows Mixed Reality is already doing right now. So is it a good thing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a much better idea. I love having an easy setup where I did not need to put a bunch of extra crap around the room in my um, for my virtual reality setup. I just have the cable going up uh, across my ceiling a bit and then drops down and I can just pick up my headset and wear it. It's fantastic. It's easier. I don't, and I didn't have to do any cables or run any cables from through my walls or throughout the entire room. That seems like such a waste of time. And this is something I really hope that they would have done way earlier. But hey, they're catching up. So good for you guys. You're catching up to what Microsoft has already been doing. <laughs> Once I saw how those were being tracked, it was a no-brainer. That's what I wanted. So that's just something cool. I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's something that's going to come out, I think, later this year. Uh, there should already be pre-orders for it, and they're not too expensive. But I would just say go for the um, Windows Mixed Reality headset because it works with everything. Whoa, that. Hold on, guys. My apologies. I just had a big jump scare from the LED lights that hang from the back of my monitor. They just fell. So I, I just heard this sound of something tumbling, and I'm like, <gasps> what is that? <laughs> okay. Big jump scare for myself from my shoddy job of taping something to the back of a monitor to get a glow effect behind it. The adhesive on the thing wasn't that good, so I just kind of taped it with some duct tape, but that fell. Okay. But yeah, VR stuff, it's fun. I'm happy that they're catching up to what Microsoft has already been doing. So moving on to the main topic. I'm going to try and go through this as quick as I can. Okay, so the main topic is basically pen and paper games. And how they, this is more on the parenting side of things, and how you can use these to kind of bond with your kids or just make a fun time for you and your friends. Um, because these are interactive games that basically deal with you having one person that builds up a, a core of a story, and the other people are interacting within their world and their rules and adding into that story with their own twists and decisions. So it's a lot of fun, and you can have you can interact with each other. Um, it's called a role playing game because you're supposed to pretend you are the character, and have conversations with each other and each other's characters as if you are the character. And it's just a lot of fun. I mean, it's silly. It's a good times. Now, the reason I'm talking about this right now is because it's a fun way to bond with your children. And I have kids. I'm a dad. That's always going to be part of who I am and how that's always going to come across in my channel. So you guys kind of got to deal with it. But yeah, basically this in parenting. So, of course, Dungeons and Dragons probably does have a lot of darker things that you don't want your kids to be exposed to, of course. But that's not to say you can't still expose them to the type of game. You can make your own. It's easy. Just use the core rules. Balance things out with um, with the attack type system with the status with the stats how leveling up works all that stuff the basic core mechanics of how characters work um how monster battles work all that stuff uh, maybe use easier dice just use six-sided dice and just change the number balancing for it to make it easy for kids if you want because i'm just gonna use six-sided dice because one of my kids is six years old or sorry one of my kids is four years old the other one's nine they're not going to be remembering how to use a 20-sided dice very easily, very quickly. But you can simplify it and just have a good time. Now, what you could do is print out basic map tiles. Um, you can just type in free map tiles online and then print out JPEG pictures of it. That's something you could do. You could also type in something like uh, was it paper tile characters or mini, mini paper uh, heroes or things like that. And then you just fold the characters. So you don't have to spend almost anything. Just the paper it takes to print. So you can just print out your own little heroes. They'll stand up. Or you can draw them with your kids. Just set up a little art project. They draw who you want to be. So you have your map. You have your characters. Just grab a couple six-sided dice. Um, explain the basic rules to your kids. Like, tell them what abilities they'll have. Like, they'll have a rainbow wand that can stun the enemy and... Just make them confused and walk around in circles for their for a day. You know, just make up different things. You don't have to tell the kids it's going to kill the enemy. No, just make the enemy go to sleep. Or turn them into a marshmallow. It can be wacky. Just turn it into a fun adventure. My daughter wants her character to be a dragon. So I'm like, okay, draw me a dragon. That's your character. I'm probably going to be a dwarf because 
I'm short anyways, so I'm already halfway there. And I'm hairy. <laughs> so I'm already all the way there. My back's got me covered on that one. Back to the point. <laughs> the other one, I don't know what my other kid's going to do with it yet, what her character's going to be, but she's going to pick something that she, she thinks is cute. It's probably going to be a kitty or a Pikachu. I, those are the two things I'm guessing. Either way, my kids are going to have a great time, and this is just something that's going to be a fun way to bond. I mean, we can just kind of build up our own little story. I keep bonking the microphone. I'm sorry. It's going to be a fun way to kind of build up our own story. I'm going to work on basic elements of a story and just general areas and general um, things that will happen, but the choices where they go will be up to my kids, and I just kind of make it up as we go along. I'm used to making up stories for them before bed anyways. So this just kind of be a fun way to spend half an hour a day on or something. Or a couple times a week on the on the days that they're not allowed to watch TV. We can play the game together. It'll be fun. So that's just a bit of advice, guys. Just learn learn like the basic rules of it. If you really want to, just buy the starter set because it has a basic list of rules. It has a map for you to play on and it has uh, character sheets that are already made for you and some dice and stuff like that. Then that's like 16 bucks on Amazon, something like that. It's a basic kit. And that way you can teach yourself how to play so you can make a fun modified version for your children if you have kids or if you plan to have kids in the future. <laughs> Cuz we are planning ahead to make our kids geeks. Yes, it's going to happen. Cuz it's just fun and we can have people that share our interests as well. <laughs> No, we we start spreading the spreading the habit of geekness. It's fun. I've always been a hardcore geek, so it's awesome. Anyways, guys, that's just kind of what I was wanted to talk about. I just thought that this is a great way for parents to interact with their children, and instead of letting kids do video games or things like that, like my daughter at first thought I was talking about a video game because I do a lot of games on this channel, so she knows I play a lot of games. She was thinking it'd be a video game on the computer. I'm like, no, we're all going to play this. It's like a board game that we get to make. And she just looked at me like, what? So it didn't click yet. But when she realized that she can make whatever character she wants and she can be whoever she wants, it was like a light in her eyes. And I'm like, yes, we can make the rules ourselves. And then your friends can join and they can join us on this adventure. And she was like, what? So it's just something fun as parents. Anyways, guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope you had a good time listening. Uh, thank you so much for watching or listening. If you're listening on a podcast or a podcatcher of your choice, thank you. You guys are awesome. Leave me a rating if you want according to how well you think I did. If I did really good, give me a couple stars. If not, don't worry about it. But leave me a comment because I love hearing from you guys. And also, if you're watching on YouTube at youtube.com slash evilzombie, then... Of course, always leave me a comment. I love to talk to you guys. It's one of the lights of my day when I get to hear from people. I mean, give me some constructive criticism if you want. Just say, hey, how you doing? I like hearing from you guys. So, see you guys later. Have a good one. Keep being amazing. Bye.